Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming into today's session. Our featured speaker today is Mr. Giovanni Rodriguez from Cinetec Solutions. My name is Bianca Guzman, and I'm the Director of Civic Engagement. Thank you for listening in today, and we appreciate your presence. We have um, Lauren Torriello, our Chief Philanthropic Officer, Melissa LaRobadier, Associate De Development Director, and I will be here with you to assist you during today's presentation. Before we get started, I want to review a few housekeeping items and let you know how you can participate in today's session. I've taken a screenshot here to show you an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop in the upper right corner. You have joined today's webinar listening through your telephone by default. If you would like to use computers, um, computer speaker system, just locate your audio pane and select microphones and speakers. You also have the ability to ask questions using your questions pane. Simply type in your question and click send. At the end of the presentation, we will do a Q&A session and take as many questions as we have time for. If you no longer have the time to answer your questions, we will email all of them to our speaker and we will forward you the answers at a later time. Please mute your audio device during the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and archived and can be accessed from our website, www.bergenvolunteers.org. Our next webinar is scheduled on March 16, 2016. Please watch out for our email. I um, also just want to take this opportunity to invite you to join Bergen Leads. Bergen Leads is a unique civic leadership program offered by Bergen Volunteer Center, and we are looking for individuals from a wide range of fields who have the skills, values, and motivation to be a special kind of leader. Individuals who have the desire and capacity to take their leadership strength to a higher level, level in order to help their communities, professions, and organizations. Our online application is up now at www.bergenleads.org. If you have any questions and you want more details, you may contact me at bdeguzman at bergenvolunteers.org, or you can call me at 201-489-9454, extension 203. Now, um, I would like to give you um, Lauren. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Lauren? Good afternoon, and thank you so much for attending this webinar. Um, for those of you who don't know too much about the Bergen Volunteer Center, uh, here we like to redefine volunteerism by harnessing the power of volunteers and turn uh, caring into action. And we do that through some really cool community-based programs, um, Mentoring Moms, Mentoring Youth and Shore, and as Bian mentioned, our Bergen Leads program. We like to make it so when you give back, you can give back with impact. How can you do that? Well, one of the ways is our upcoming uh, Books in a Bag initiative run through our, Bergen Vol our uh, Business Volunteer Council. Uh, this initiative is to help promote uh, literacy and literacy education um, for children K through 12th grade. Um, our goal is to distribute over 10,000 books, and with your support, I know we can do that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Books in a Bag or being a part of this really great opportunity, um, please reach out to Erica West at 201-489-9454, extension 205. Also, we have a really fun event coming up, uh, Comedy Night. So if you are available and would like to join us on Friday, March 18th, at Bananas Comedy Club in Hasbrook Heights for a fundraiser to support the great work of the Bergen Volunteer Center. Our comedian that evening will be Brett Ernst, and tickets are $40. Doors open at 8 p.m., and the show begins at 9. And if you have any questions or, again, would like further information, please reach out to Melissa at 201-489-9454, extension 206. Now, for a little background about our speaker today, our presenter, Giovanni Rodriguez. Um, Giovanni is the co-founder of Cinetech Solutions, an award-winning managed IT services company with clients in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Texas, and he's also the co-founder of GreenLink Networks, a company that offers hosted cloud voice over IP communication solutions nationwide. Prior to Cinetech, uh, Giovanni held positions with AT&T, ComDisco, and T-Systems, where as a senior consultant, he worked with large corporations such as Shell Oil, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering, Deluxe Corporation, Capgemini, and more in various projects in IT infrastructure, technical support, um, creating efficiencies, and streamlining the IT processes and procedures. He and his business partner had realized that organizations struggled with either not being able to afford a business-grade phone system, and those that did were overcharged by traditional phone service providers and telecom consultants. So they decided to take this head-on and develop a cloud-based phone system solution at an affordable price. This is GreenLink's network, and it was founded in early of 2015. 
Giovanni considers himself a serial entrepreneur and is passionate about speaking and technology, and most importantly, productively and uh, productivity and motivating others to embark on the journey of starting their own business. Presently, Giovanni lives in Addison, Texas with his wife and two-year-old son and is a proud graduate of our Bergen Leeds program. Um, Giovanni, I'd like to turn it over to you and thank you again once more for being our presenter today. Okay, uh, good afternoon. And uh, let me uh, go ahead and uh, show my screen. And uh, we're going to talk about today is uh, talk about the role of technology in modern organizations. And uh, what we're looking to accomplish is to uh, provide you with several options so that way you could take one thing uh, back to your organization that you could apply um, after this webinar. Uh, again, Giovanni Rodriguez, uh, co-founder of Cinetech Solutions and Greenlane Networks. Um, so the first thing that, that I wanted to do is um, start with a few facts that have to do with how the business world is changing. And really, my, my objective is, is to, to paint the picture on what's happening around us and, and how we need to uh, try to adapt and uh, be more optimized and more efficient uh, in the way that we do uh, our day-to-day -day business. Uh, a great way to do that is um, using technology to accomplish uh, more with less. So let's go through some of these. Um, over 40% of companies that were at the top four, Fortune 500 companies in the year 2000 uh, are no longer there uh, in 2010. So that's within 10 years. Um, and obviously, you know, if uh, if you take a deep dive and take a look at what it, what is what is causing that disruption, <clears throat> you know, technology is is high up there in that list. Um, at the end of 2013, there were mobile more mobile connected devices that there were people on Earth. Uh, so that shows how rapidly, you know, technologies such as the mobile connected devices are reaching um, <clears throat> everyone. Contact on the internet tripled uh, between 2010 and 2013, and that's a number that's, that's pretty incredible uh, to think how quickly things are moving. Um, at the end of the fourth quarter of 2015, Facebook actually had 1.59 billion monthly active users. And, and one thing to point out is that monthly active user means that these users actually logged onto Facebook within the last 30 days uh, from the time that was collected. Uh, by 2030, about 5 billion people, or two-thirds of the global population, could be middle class. And the amount of data that is stored on servers and computers is actually doubling every 18 months. So these are some of the driving forces that are, you know, changing, uh, or some examples of things that are changing our business world. Now, if we take a look at what's happening at the individual level, all these forces are leading to an unprecedented amount of change in the way that we interact with our customers, our employees, and the, with the way that we manage our resources. So this is causing a new, bus new business models to spring up, taking advantage of some more closely connected networks. Um, so these individuals are being empowered. Um, and we're dramatically changing the way that we support and how our customers are demanding a new business experience. So um, some examples here, millennials are three times as likely to follow brands over a family member, social networks. 73% of people uh, wouldn't care if the, br the brands that they use disappear from their life. And that's 73%. That's a very high number. And if you think about a company like Uber and the way that it's disrupted uh, the taxi business, or think about Air B two B, and the way that you know within four years they they achieve over five hundred um, rentable rooms, uh, something that took the the traditional hotel companies you know thirty to forty years to achieve. Um, the half the half life of a piece of content that's shared on social networks is within three hours, uh, which means that within those three hours you're going to get fifty percent of all the likes and shares that 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 post is ever going to get. Um, people are trusting their employees to tell the truth um, on social media more uh, more than their CEOs. Newspapers have lo have lost uh, a lot of business uh, since 2000, and more than 70 percent of customers believe that small businesses are more concerned about their needs than larger companies, and that says a lot about small organizations and small businesses. Um, and our, our capability of actually reaching out to those customers uh, with the trust that they have in us. 
So some of these changes has, have also Im, uh, created improvements in the ways that in the way that we do resource optimization, um, especially on the work-life environment uh, or, or balance. Fathers in the U.S. have nearly tripled the time that they're spending with their kids. Mothers are spending more time with their children than they did in the 60s. 7% um, of Generation Y workers are working for a Fortune 500 company. Uh, so startups and small businesses also dominate the workforce uh, for that demographic. And employees are able to do more, more efficiently, and do more in less time thanks to, to some of these technology changes. I left this blank on purpose, you know, with the thought, you know, let's think about what are some of the things that technology has done up until this point to actually help help you run your business. So um, the agenda for today, now driving the, to the meat and potatoes of the, of the, of the presentation, um, five technology areas that organizations simply can't ignore. And um, what we try to do here is to, um, one, go over software that's needed to run your business and, you know, put some things into perspective and bring some things to your attention uh, so that way you could go back to your business and say, hey, that's an area where I actually need to, need to do some work on that. Um, wanted to actually talk about protecting that investment uh, in software with security. So I'm going to be going through some tips on security and how we can, uh, you know, protect software. And I want to make a couple of points about software. Um, you know, us uh, technology guys or geeks, as some people call us, um, we love talking about firewalls and servers and desktops. But at the end of the day, software, this, the actual software that runs your business is, is the driving force, is the key. Um, you know, everything else is just a vehicle to, to get to that point. So that's why I, I put that on the first um, on the first area because it is really what actually helps you drive business and optimize. I'm going to talk a little bit about cloud computing, uh, more from a, from a concept and understanding, uh, and also providing you know some options. Cloud computing uh, it's a buzzword these days is not the only option. Uh, there are many times where we help customers you know move to the cloud and also move from the cloud. Um, back to on-premise and, and, and understanding when is the right time to do that is key. Talk a little bit about telephony, especially because of some of the uh, enhancements that we've had in that area in recent years. Um, and we'll talk about some, some options for technology support, um, you know, what to look for when you're looking for your next um, IT company. So let's, let's dive into um, software to run business processes. So these are some, you know, I started with talking about communication. So these are some must-have communication tools that some of you might already have, and hopefully I'm touching on some that either have enhanced um, or some things that you don't have that you should be looking into. So the very first one is email. Um, most of us probably have an email account. Uh, that's, that's, there's no doubt in that. Um, however, there are some technologies that have evolved uh, and where if you are using, uh, as an example, POP3 email, you should probably move away to a more robust email. And I, I'll explain. Um, so if you have a POP3 email account, um, you basically have different copies on all of your devices, whether it's your computer, your phone, that don't interact with one another. So if you get an email um, on your cell phone and you either delete it, move it, mark it as read, you go back to the office, you have to do that again because it doesn't have a true synchronization. So as a, as a business, you should be looking at moving to a full-fledged um, exchange server or server type of, um, of uh, setup in which you, if you're, depending on the size, you might have a server that's in-house that's set up by your IT provider, or you could sign up to um, what's called hosted exchange or email in the cloud. And there are several options from, you know, if you're a nonprofit, you could look at Google, uh, which provides um, free uh, email, uh, true server email um, for, for nonprofits. Uh, Microsoft uh, on the Office 365 for nonprofits does the same. If you're in the for-profit world, um, you could sign up with, uh, especially if you're starting, starting your business, you could sign up and pay per user. 
um, and you know it could range anywhere from you know six to twelve dollars a user you don't have a capital investment that you have to make up front uh, and you take advantage of you know truly having synchronization of your calendar your email your contacts all of that you're in and out of the office and you're able to communicate um, and, and you know at any time and, and I'm going to mention this a couple of times anytime you take something that takes you 15 minutes and drive it down to something that takes you five you kind of sh continue to shave off uh, you know time and increasing productivity so um, your website it's another example of a communication tool uh, where you are uh, moving from a website that's static to a website you know uh, I wrote CMS on there a content management um, service which uh, what it allows you to do is your your web designer could cre create a website that you have the power to add pictures add comments and blog entries update your website so that way it's, there's more of a dynamic dynamic relationship your website is your office to the world on the internet so um, you know that presence is, is just as important as as your you know your physical um, office so that's that's an area that uh, you can look into looking into your telephone system you know and especially on the smaller scale organizations be an nonprofit or, or for-profit organization um, but you know a lot of organizations are uh, dealing with antiquated um, solutions like you know just phone lines um, and and not you know the, you know what the larger organizations are really enjoying you know, having their own voicemail and their own extension um, having an auto attendant that welcomes um, the, the, the callers uh, being able to have business continuity so if you're looking at whether having if you have analog lines or you're looking at upgrading or replacing your phone system looking at a cloud system uh, would basically save you from the capital investment and uh, probably could reduce your cost as it is um, faxing and and somebody at here at the office was mentioning you know why are we you know talking about the modern office why are you mentioning faxing uh, well a lot of people use faxing um, and and one of the things that's happening in the next few years is that you know your traditional analog lines are going to not be available at some point. So we have to look at how do we migrate from your traditional fax into a more modern fax. So uh, the capabilities are there today where you can actually take your fax number and do fax to email, where you take all of the incoming faxes and route them to an email address or to a distribution group and get those as a PDF. So you're saving toner, you're saving paper, uh, you are at, able to get those on the fly if you're you know, di driving down the road or, or you're, you're at, a, at a remote site. So you're able to receive that fax, forward it to the right person, and be more efficient. Uh, at the same time, outgoing could also be uh, converted where you're actually sending from your computer. So rather than you know, imagine someone that uh, is in an organization that, that has heavy faxing, right? Yeah. So every time, multiple times a day, somebody has to stand up, print something out, to then, you know, wait by the fax machine to fax it. You know, how much time are we gaining if you have, you have the ability to fax right out of your computer? Um, smartphones, you know, um, we all know about smartphones. There's tons of apps that could help you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of those examples by fully utilizing you know the capabilities of the smartphones to actually run some of those business operations you know it could be something as simple as remind reminders tasks you know how to organize your day you know use these tools most most people these days have a smartphone and now the smartphone and the concept of you know bring your own device to work does have a lot of challenges uh, both for the organization from an HR perspective and also for the IT uh, folks that are, are, are managing those devices uh, you know there are you know tools where you know, now in, 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 in the smartphone world with the employees are bringing in their smartphones you have to think about the fact that they're carrying personal information on that phone as well as business information and businesses have to protect themselves in having ways to be able to clear or wipe that business data sitting on that device if an employee left the company so it does bring some challenges, but there are solutions out there that could allow you to do that. Uh, same thing for laptops. You know, um, you know, if you carry a laptop and uh, there's there's sensitive information on that laptop, 
uh, you should look at ways to protect yourself from being able to wipe that device or encrypt that device in case it's ever lost. Um, so one other communication tool that I really, really like is chatting. Um, you know, we use chatting internally here at the office, um, and it's great. You know, I could be in the middle of a call. The other person on the other side could be on a call, and, you know, they might just need a quick answer to something uh, to be able to respond to a customer. Uh, so that it creates that instant, you know, um, instant communication. Uh, a little more in a, a little more informal. Um, it could be recorded for historical purposes, um, but it, it really speeds up communication uh, rather than waiting for a meeting. Uh, and again, you know, it's ways to cut down on time and deliver a better customer experience uh, for you know whoever your customer is. So that's something that I, I highly recommend. Some some companies use a public um, chatting service like Skype. Um, you know the, the disadvantage of that is the fact that we um, the employee a lot of times could communicate with you know personal contacts and things like that. So um, I'm going to move on to uh, marketing contact management. How do you manage the people that you talk to in order to do uh, to gain business? Or if you're a, like a nonprofit organization, it might be how you, how you do your fundraising and and you know, um, a lot of times companies are small. They start with uh, some type of spreadsheet, uh, maybe a small database. And as you grow, you'll find that you know things are very difficult to manage. So there are several um, types of uh, applications out there that would help you manage that content. You know, your, your contact management. Who do you have to contact? And keep track of your sales pipeline, marketing and even supporting customer service. And these types of applications are, are, are called CRM application, uh, customer relationship management. And um, you could choose an, a, a cloud-based um, application like Salesforce, where you pay per user per month. Um, and some of the packages for, for the basics start you know, uh, pretty affordable, and then it, it continues to go up as your needs increase. Um, and the advantage of that is obviously you could you know sign on whatever you want. You could you know reduce users. Um, you have no capital investment, or you go with a traditional application that's installed on your computer, um, like Act as an example by Sage, uh, where you could you could do it and you could organize yourself. You know you could tie it into your calendar, uh, keep track of tasks and things that need to be done. And uh, you know in the in the nonprofit nonprofit world. Um, you also have some applications that would, would help you with fundraising and, and keeping track of you know marketing and, and, and those types of things, reporting, et cetera. Um, another area that's very important uh, is you know how do you deliver the product or service that your business is about? So whether you're selling you know, widgets or uh, you're an attorney that's uh, you know processing cases or a doctor, um, our recommendation is usually to look for once you get to that point that whatever processes and, and applications that you put together uh, are not meeting your business needs, you know, the next thing to look at is let's find out if there's an industry specific application that's available um, for you to use as a tool to manage your day to day. Um, you know, as an example, you know, an attorney that's managing cases maybe manually or through Word documents could move into a case management application that would tie into to tie into his calendar. Uh, things are based on a checklist, um, et cetera, et cetera. Think about you know doctors and their their EMR system. Um, so there might be companies, there might be industries where there's there's really nothing out there that's specific for the, for your industry. So then you know the option would be to to tailor something that's already made, maybe your act application, maybe use it uh, to manage your manage your business. And you know the, usually the last resort is to create something custom built. Uh, it's usually the most pricey option. Uh, but if you get into a situation where you have a business process where there's nothing out there that does what you need done, then you can make an investment on that application. you have a custom built. and a lot of times, it, it would cost you maybe you know a fraction of, of the cost of a full-time employee, uh, but you're really um, stopping a, a manual process that's really taking you know multiple people to do. 
Um, and you know, I'm always looking for, you know, how can I shave time of, of a person's day? Um, and all of a sudden, you could carve out a part-time uh, position out of, you know, just kind of making these changes. And a lot of times, these changes are one-time investments that, you know, the, the return on investment it, it, it could be within within months, within a year, and then you continue to take advantage of it, of it year after year. The other the other option or, or an additional option that you have is you know there's always an app uh, for that you know if you if you're struggling with keeping track of some piece of your business uh, and you're looking for ways to to streamline you know you could look at applications I, I I have three quick examples of things that I personally use um, one of them is Evernote um, it's free uh, it's cloud based and it, Evernote allows you to basically take notes. Um, you're able to clip things from a website that you're looking at. You're able to, you know, take notes uh, from a meeting and 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 save them correctly. Um, you could, up, you know, there's an there's an application that installs on your computer, a, a phone app. You could access it through the web. And if you went to the premium version, it's really like forty five dollars a year. So it's really inexpensive uh, for like unlimited storage. Um, I also use Google Keep which this one is free. They don't actually have a paid version. And it's great for checklists. If you're, you know, if you're coming in in the morning and, and creating a checklist for the day on things that you must follow up on, uh, this, this is great. Uh, there's an app for the phone. Uh, so you could actually you know, start your, your to-do list even before you get to the office. And then you, know, you could access it through a web um, portal and you know, check things off. Um, it, it works really great um, and gets you organized. Um, so Expensify. Is another. Um, we actually use it here at the office. Uh, it starts free, I think, up to five users, and then you pay. I think it's five dollars a month per user. Um, but it's great for anybody that's actually tracking expenses, mileage. And one of the things that I really like is the fact that you could you could connect one of your credit cards, uh, the one that you're using to uh, incur those expenses, and it downloads all of those expenses for you, and then you grab, you know click and drag to a expense report. Um, you could take pictures from your phone um, for the receipts. Um, they, if it comes from your credit card, you don't have to have a receipt for things that are, I believe, under $75. So it makes creating an expense report really lightning fast. Um, and then it connects to QuickBooks, and, and there's some other things that I don't personally do myself, uh, but it's done here at the office. So. These are little things that you know. If if there's no application out there that's kind of running and managing your business that's specific to your industry, there's a lot of little apps that you could use to actually help you uh, continue to get there. Um, your financial application, um, your QuickBooks, Quicken, and for the bigger businesses, your Mass 90, Mass 200. Um, you know, a lot of everybody uses them. Um, one of the areas, and, and and my point on this is, let's find out. What things are you not using from it that could really cut down on your time? You know, one example is, you know, are you are you doing bank bank statements manually? You know, did you know that you could connect to the bank and actually download those transactions and just, you know, work on exception because it would learn that this gas station is actually gas and it would automatically put it in the right account code uh, on your chart of accounts. So. Um, can you are you doing uh, merchant statements manually? You know you could tie into your merchant account and actually do that um, automatically, and then just spot check uh, your your payroll, your you know some of the HR functionality. Um, so that's you know even if you're using the application, it's really taking a closer look at how can how can I streamline, how can how can I optimize and get more for my investment on that on this application. Um, so now that that we went through some of the some of the uh, areas to focus on uh, when it comes to um, you know applications and areas of the business, I want to talk a little bit about security. Um, we all know that uh, it's it's a, it's a, a a testy subject and a concern for a lot of business owners. Um, as you see on the screen, um, a semantic study found that cyber attacks are, are costing small and mid-sized businesses an average of. $188,000 um, a year, with downtime costing them $12,500 a day on average. So you know, we always think about you know, if I can't make calls, if I can't work, if I can't take those orders, you know, how much are we losing per hour? 
And there are, you know, there are professional companies out there that will, that will manage your security, but there are also certain things that you could implement yourself and take back and, and, and just make sure that some of these things are, are looked at. These are some recent attacks that we've had on big businesses. Um, you know, they're the ones that make the news, uh, but there's also a lot of, a lot of uh, things that are happening to small businesses. I, I recently had a friend who, who um, runs an accounting firm and he had a lot of information on his laptop, uh, and he was synchronizing his uh, data over to one of those cloud file providers. Uh, well, he got infected with the crypto virus, um, and everything was encrypted, and they were demanding a ransom. Um, and the unfortunate thing was that the type of backup he was using, uh, which was not a real backup, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, everything all the files on the backup that was cloud-based were, were also encrypted. So he was counting on the fact that he was going to have these files on the cloud backup solution. Um, he was actually using uh, an application like Dropbox to actually synchronize all the stuff that he had locally. Um, but being that it's a true synchronization, uh, it actually synchronized, synchronized the encryption as well. Uh, so unfortunately, he lost a lot of data. Um, I haven't followed up with him to see how he was able to uh, recover from that, but it's it's very unfortunate. Um, and here's here's a few examples that uh, that I'm, I won't go uh, into them necessarily. Um, so these are some security tips um, that I think you could take back and and really implement immediately um, in your business. Um, the first one is very simple: have very strong passwords. Change them often. Uh, you know, have a have a procedure where you know they get changed at least every three months. Um, use minimum of eight characters, uh, use uppercase letters, numbers, and possibly an uncommon character, maybe a dollar sign, an at sign, or an exclamation sign, uh, because um, that's, that's very important. There was a dating website that was uh, recently hacked, and um, millions of people, uh, uh, basically their, their passwords were identified, and it was, it was very unfortunate. Um, and, and they found out that, you know, about 40% of the passwords were, you know, password or password zero one. So those things are very easy to crack. Uh, you know, we 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 come into contact with new clients, and you know, a lot of people keep their passwords under the key under the keyboard. Um, passwords, you know, need to be need to be protected. Uh, it's really what's blocking um, users from from entering your system. Have an anti uh, an up to date antivirus solution. There are many of them out there. Um, you have to make sure that they're updated daily. Uh, viruses come up daily, and the antivirus companies, what they do is they create a vac vaccine for that virus. So you want to make sure that the vi vaccine is within your system by the time the virus hits your 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 company your uh, your computer. Um, and if you have an IT provider, uh, make sure that they're monitoring those updates on a on a real time basis because that could be the difference between you getting the crypto locker and you know having all your data encrypted uh, and not be able to access it. Um, another way that you could protect your business is by having a strong anti-spam solution. Um, and what that means is that you have a provider that is checking your, your, your mail for spam and at the same time they check for viruses that are coming in through email. And if you look at the first uh, picture here, You'll notice that you know they, you know, all the clean and dirty email comes into your server, which is slowing down your internet for no reason. Uh, and then maybe you're checking, you know, in Outlook uh, for you know the spam. Uh, the, the solutions that I particularly like it, are the ones where they block the, the spam even before it gets to your server, before it gets to your location. Um, so that way, your one, your internet speed is better because it's not being utilized by downloading all this, thing, all this junk that you don't actually need. And secondly, it's protecting you from a security perspective. Some of these solutions um, have add-on solutions that could help, um, like um, email archiving and email encryption. So if you are regulated or um, have to be in compliance for uh, things like HIPAA in, in healthcare or FINDRA for financial or PCI if, you, if you're a merchant, that processes credit cards. Um, these are some of the things that um, would actually help you um, be more protected um, by using you know, email encryption and, and a spam solution. Uh, Windows patches are extremely important. 
Um, my analogy is that the you know the antivirus actually you know protects uh, the computer on the front end, but in reality, the back door that the virus is exploiting. It's a backdoor that was released by or discovered by Windows, and they're creating a patch for it. So if your computer is patched, uh, chances are that virus um, won't even need to be protected by the antivirus. So this is kind of doubling down on let's close all of, all of our backdoors, and then with the antivirus, I'm going to put a lock in the door. Um, now, these patches come out weekly. I mean, there, there are you know, tens of, of, of patches that come out uh, weekly. Um, uh, and then once a month, there's a Super Tuesday where the, the, all these patches get released as well. Um, you know, as a minimum, you know, you could try you know, having the computers on automatic. There are some patches, however, that will, will actually hurt not your computer or maybe an application that you're running that's not ready for that patch. So, you know, having someone that's actually looking at which patches are actually going in um, would be uh, very helpful. Uh, but as a minimum, if you don't have that capability, um, you know, just make sure that these patches uh, are being run uh, on a frequent basis. Another another area would be having an unsupported operating system. Uh, what that means is that Microsoft is not creating patches that will protect those computers anymore. Um, so if you have Windows XP, which end of life was um, on, in 2014, or if you're running a server with 2003, which um, their support expired in 2015, that could be a cost of concern um, because you are basically being, you know, running unprotected uh, for those for those patches. Another area would be a business grade firewall, uh, and this, you know, I don't like clip art, but this one actually expresses it really well. Uh, it, it what it does is is a wall that's in protecting your perimeter. Uh, so it prevents any unwanted uh, hacking or any, anything that's not been authorized to come in, not to come in. So everything kind of bounces off the same way that, um, that you have it here on the screen. And you know, this is an actual firewall and how it actually looks like. <laughs> so it's a piece of, piece of device that goes, uh, goes on, your, on your network. Um, having a good business continuity solution it's extremely important, um, formerly known as backup. Um, in the past, people really only talked about backups or need backups. Um, and traditionally, that backup used to be data only. One point, uh, for those taking notes, one point that you want to make uh, to your IT provider is that if they're giving you a data only backup, all your ba data is backed up. However, in the case of a disaster, in the case of a server going down or crashing, there are 30, 40, 50 hours that have to be put into rebuilding that server, loading an OS, loading the applications, doing all the configuration before that data is actually, you're able to put that data back onto that server. You're out for days, uh, if not weeks. So if you actually have a image-based backup, that means that the backup system is taking an image, a snapshot of the entire server configuration, operating system, and all that would allow you to actually restore the whole thing in one shot. No need to, you know, pay, especially if you're paying hourly for IT support. Um, you don't really want to be in a data only where, in the case of a disaster, you're paying tons and tons of hour of reconfiguration. Um, with the image base, you could actually just put everything back the way it was. Um, another consideration is on-site versus off-site. So on-site is great for quick restores. Uh, if there's a, a folder that was lost, I would say 90% of the time we get calls for, um, for backup restores are not because of a disaster or not because the whole server crashed. It's usually because a user deleted something. So having that data on-site um, where you could quickly recover, um, it's great and important. However, if there was a fire, your disaster, you also want to have a copy of that data off-site uh, in case the whole site was lost. So um, it's another point, you know, that you want, you might want to have both of these. Uh, another thing about the data only is that after you spend all that time reconfiguring, then now you're, if you have a, an off-site only, now you're relying on the internet connection to do the whole lot download. So 
these four points are, you know, things to take into consideration when talking to your, your IT provider about backups. Um, and one point, which I think I mentioned already, uh, is the fact that OneDrive, Dropbox, or Box.net are not backups. If you use these services, you will still need backup. And the reason is, if you make a change on a file that's on your computer, or you delete that file on your computer, it would synchronize, and yes, there's redundancy. They'll have your data in multiple servers and multiple locations. However, because it's a true sync, if you delete here, it will delete everywhere. And that has come as a surprise to a lot of people, thinking that they're fully protected and backed up because they have one of these services. So um, another thing, just be careful with these. They bypass a lot of the things that we mentioned previously. Uh, they bypass your firewall. They're going right to your computer. Um, a lot of people say, hey, you know, here's here's a thumb drive. You know, copy those pictures from the picnic we had over the weekend. And, you know, that, that get, you know, passed to you. You bring it over to the office, and all of a sudden, um, you know, you're creating an infection. Um, and, and at that point, you bypass the firewall, and you're relying on having great patches and having a strong and updated um, antivirus system for protection. But if you don't have any of those, you could basically be infected and, Something as critical as a script crypto locker or anything like that that's is very crucial. We have some clients that have the USB uh, port disabled on their computers to prevent that from happening. Um, so just a quick point on those. Um, and then you know um, wanted to touch briefly on you know cloud computing. Um, you know it's as I said before it's a buzzword. A lot of people um, think that they have to move move to the cloud and. And I just wanted to, to touch on this and say that you know the cloud is 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 not necessarily a technology. Uh, it's a combination of technologies, but it's really a way to consume products differently than the way we did before. Um, you know, as opposed to having to purchase that computer or purchase that phone system, we're able to take advantage and pretty much plug into the provider the way that we plug into the electrical company and pay for what you consume. So it has a lot of advantages. Um, it has its disadvantages as well, which I want to point out. So the, the advantages are the fact that you don't have to make a capital investment. Uh, the provider has done that for you already. And the fact that you could kind of throttle back and forth between, you know, if you have a, a seasonal business and you need more, more power, uh, you could go ahead and increase. And if you uh, don't need the power anymore, and then you could, you could decrease. It gives you that flexibility as opposed to having to purchase planning for the most that you'll never need, which is a lot of times what happens uh, in the other model. Uh, but it has, it does have a lot of times a per, per user cost per month. Um, and, you know, if you don't pay that service, it gets turned off. But it does have the, you know, it becomes an operating expense. Uh, now, there's a lot of businesses that, you know, start out in using some cloud services, you know, where they're paying per user. And they get to a point where they're too large, they have too many users paying, you know, per user per month, and now they they start talking to their provider about how do I, you know, get my own server, maybe host it at my office, host it at, at the data center. Um, so uh, your provider should be able to, you know, depending on the size of your business, depending on on your needs, guide you in the right direction of whether or not cloud is the best um, way forward. Want to uh, also talk about voice over IP? Um, it's somewhat related to to cloud. Um, so that's the, you know telephony and communication is is a great area uh, to improve productivity um, and 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 po empower your users with the right tools, um, but also an opportunity to lower your costs. Uh, one of the things that voice over IP has been doing is that is bypassing that old infrastructure that we're still paying for um, in terms of uh, you know the traditional phone lines and uh, all the fees and, and, and the cost of that infrastructure. Uh, it's riding on the internet protocol, meaning running through the internet, to allow you to basically have the same type of service for lower costs and a lot of times including things that traditionally you had to pay for as an extra item like long distance and, and those types of things. So. When you're looking at a phone system, um, you know, if right now you are a business that's running your business with just phone lines, 
where you can't transfer a call, you don't have individual voicemails, I would say absolutely look at cloud, uh, at a cloud phone system as an option. If you're a little bigger where you would have put a phone system in, uh, in, in your budget, then these are some of the things that you need to take into consideration. Um, you could use a, a, a what, what's called an on-premise system or a system that you purchase and you have at your office and you can have voice over IP lines coming to it, which means that you're taking advantage of voice over IP. However, you like to own it. You know, you like to you know purchase it. It's mine. Um, and you know, so some of the some of the uh, characteristics of this type of system is it's that there's an initial capital investment. Um, you still pay for ongoing phone lines. That that doesn't go away. Um, and then you you have to pay for other things like ongoing costs for support, liability for parts and repair, loan distance, etc. But the, the one main advantage um, why a lot of businesses go in this route is because you could actually share a number of lines with a larger number of extensions. Let's say you have a business that's 20 employees, so you get a phone system with 20, 20 phones, um, but you could get away with having only 10 lines, right? You're thinking not everybody's going to be on, on the phone at the same time, so you want to go in that direction. Now, with cloud, you don't have a capital investment. It's all provided as a service, as you see here. You basically plug into the cloud. You're going to have a phone um, on, on at your office, uh, and, it, and you're going to deal with a fixed fee per extension uh, instead of you know all these different charges that are coming in. Um, that doesn't go away. Um, so the um, it comes with unlimited lines, unlimited long distance, and support. So if you're a small business that don't have a system at all, I would definitely look at cloud. And if you are a business that's actually considering one or the other, um, you could, if you're leaning towards purchasing, um, I would look at VoIP as a way to actually, you know, give lines to that system, or take a look at cloud, um, and you know, average out the cost and, and make a decision then. Um, so hopefully, this this illustrated uh, the two options for you. Um, the last thing that I wanted to uh, go over with you is. Um, you know, get you familiar with the term manage IT services. So what this means is that, and, and, and my goal is to let you know that this is a service that's out there. Um, <clears throat> and what this means is that, you know, your options are you either have a IT consultant, um, or uh, another term is a break fix provider, which is somebody that's coming in and repairing an issue. Um, you know, comes in, you know, puts out the fire, and walks away, uh, you know. They, you know, that's what's within the scope of that engagement. Um, so that's one way to address IT-related issues, kind of, you know, doing my, doing it by the hour. But the the term managed IT services is a provider that's a little bit larger, and he has all the tools and staff and processes and procedures to actually help you run your IT department. So you're basically outsourcing your complete IT department to this company. And the pricing is a little bit different. It's almost like you know, uh, cloud in a sense, uh, it, because you paying a fixed amount of either per user or per computer, per server, um, that gives you unlimited services from you know, proactive management and handle all those security related things, you know, provide antivirus, help desk, technicians when needed, vendor management, and finally, strategic guidance or IT management to really dive in and take your business forward. It's a different type of engagement. I'm not saying one is better than the other, um, you know, but the scope of that IT consultant is to come in and help you at that moment. Um, you know, I feel that with the managed IT services area, you have more time and more of an ongoing relationship to really be able to dive under the hood and get past the day-to-day -day IT, you know, fixing a particular problem, and really be able to focus on strategic. Once you know the day-to-day -day is it's pretty much um, running smoothly, then there's time to actually focus on some of those things that matter more, like productivity and uh, you know helping the bottom line. And this type of relationship, uh, you pay for this, and you get you know full 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 time. Uh, full staff on demand. Um, my name is Giovanni Rodriguez. Uh, this is my contact information. Um, either I can be reached by phone, email, um, I'm on social media, and uh, 
you know, uh, we talked about Cinetec. Uh, Cinetec is a managed IT service provider. We've uh, been in business for uh, 13 years, um, now in April. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren and Bian, for the invitation. And uh, if anybody has any questions, I will be more than happy to take those questions. Um, or if you guys need to email me or email Bian or Lauren, um, we could get those questions answered as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Giovanni. That was very, very informative. Thank you so much. Um, do you have any questions? Um, if you can, if you you know, if you have questions at any point after this presentation, you can email me directly or Giovanni, and we will get back to you. And again, uh, this is recorded, so if you need to go back to the previous session, um, you can find all the recordings at www.bergenvolunteers.org. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Giovanni? Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks.